Hello, welcome. In this video, we are looking at um, the trigonometric equations and identities, and we're going to solve the sinusoidal equations, not the basic one, but I guess the more advanced one. Um, so I actually really enjoy this problem set, and let me give you a moment to read this problem, try out on your own, and then press play and we'll solve it together. Okay, so there are multiple answers in many of these problems, and the idea is that we're given some kind of equation and what we have to do is solve for x. Now here, one thing to pay attention to before we get started, are we in radians or degrees? And you can see right here that we are in radians. So I'm going to rewrite the problem and show you uh, how I would go about solving it. We have 9 times the sine of 18x plus 11 equals 2. So our variables here. The first thing we're going to do is subtract 11 from both sides, and we're just solving for x. So a lot of the normal things are happening here. We have 9 times the sine of 18x equals 2 minus 11, which is negative 9. Then we can divide both sides by 9, the coefficient of our variable term right here. 9's cancel. Negative 9 divided by 9 is just negative 1. And we get to this step. The sine of 18x equals negative 1. And I'll actually move this over here. Now we get to do, uh, I think, one of the cooler steps when you're learning all this stuff about trig is you can take the inverse sine of both sides. So the inverse sine of the sine of 18x, we'll deal with that in a second, but we'll have to equal the inverse sine of negative 1. Isn't that cool? You can take the inverse side of both sides, just like you can add or subtract to both sides, and so on and so forth. Now what happens is, the inverse sine of the sine, those are inverse functions, they cancel each other out, and what will always be left is the value uh, inside the parentheses here, which is just 18x. And 18x is going to equal the inverse sine of negative 1. Now this one we don't need a calculator for, um, because, and this is kind of a... This is uh, a situation where there's not more than one answer. There's just one answer, which is unusual in this problem set. Thinking about my unit circle, sine is the height of your angle, and the height is only negative 1 down here. This is the point 0, negative 1, and what's that angle measure? Well, if we start here at the x-axis and go around, that is 3 pi over 2, or 270 degrees. So there's only one angle within that unit circle rotation the first rotation that gets you negative 1, so that's 3 pi over 2. But if I, I think you agree that if I spun around again from that point 360 degrees or 2 pi radians, did it once or twice, or in the other direction, a negative direction, I would get the same sign. In other words, any amount of rotations from that point will still get you a sign of negative 1. So we say any amount of rotations, 2 pi rotations, n times, where n is an integer, which is a way of saying you can rotate any number of whole number times in either direction, essentially. That's an 18x will have to equal one of these angles, but we want to solve for x. How do we do that? We can divide both sides by 18, or just we can say multiply everything by 1 18th. And what will that get us? Well, let's scroll up here. Uh, these 18s cancel, so now we just have x. 3 times 1 is 3, 2 times 18 is 36, so we have 3 pi over 36 plus 2 pi over 18 times n, and x equals pi over 12 plus pi over 9 times n. So x can be any of these angles here. Uh, sorry, sorry, x can be any of these values here. Now if we scroll up, you'll notice that that choice is not given. So we go back and go back to our unit circle here. So I said that this is 3 pi over 2. But what if I just viewed it this way? What if I said negative pi over 2, right? So this could be thought of as 3 pi over 2, which is the same thing as negative pi over 2. And if I go back to this step right here, Right, let me move things over. Right, so this step, I I said um, that actually this step right here. Sorry, 
put this over. Okay, I thought this. <laughs> I thought moving these over was going to go faster. Oh boy. All right. Okay. Finally. So we could we solve it this way, or we could say 18x equals negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. 2 pi n. And here I didn't I didn't have any like foresight. I wasn't like predicting that this would work. It will work. But I just tried something else because I knew there was there were no mistakes in the algebra here. So I thought, well, what's another easy way to represent this angle, a common way? And that would be negative pi over 2. Now when I multiply everything by 1 18th or divide everything by 18, what we're going to get is 8x. Oops. I want to use blue here. X equals negative pi over 36 plus 2 pi over 18, which is just pi over 9 times n. And that choice is given uh, right here, choice B. Now, before we go any further, let's just say a couple of things. In general, you, this, this, might, this probably won't happen, but if you get uh, a form of an angle where you are, you, you're convinced it's right, but you don't see it as one of the choices, play with the n value to see if you get any of the other choices on the list. So instead of thinking, I, I actually went back and thought about this problem in a different way. Um, we, we could try and think of different values of n that would get us to our answer here. So for example, if n equals negative 1 in, in this problem right here, so another way of finding other choices that work, suppose let n equal negative 1. Well then you could say you have pi over 12, x equals pi over 12, plus pi over 9 times negative 1, now these two fractions, I'm going to get them in terms of 36, so it's 3 pi over 36 minus 4 pi over uh, 36. All right, I just distributed the negative 1 and wrote 1 ninth in terms of 36. That gets me negative pi over 36. So what that will do is, now this is another angle in the sequence of angles that give you a sign of negative 1. This is the angle, and this, this matches this piece right here. So, so this angle plus any multiple of pi over 9 will also work. Because this, this part will always be the same. Because the interval between the angles, or x values in this case, excuse me, that give you um, a sign of negative 1 when you're multiplying x by 18, that will have to be pi over 9 apart. So you can always find different starting points also by substituting different values of n. Now, in the next problem, um, here, we have something very similar. Just notice here we're in degrees. And we're given 4 times the cosine of 10x plus 2 equals 2. So I'm going to solve this. And I'm going to move a little bit quicker now. So 4 times the cosine of 10x plus 2 equals 2. Subtract 2 and divide by 4. We get the cosine of 10x is 0. Now I take the inverse cosine of both sides. So the inverse cosine of the cosine of 10x equals the inverse cosine of 0. These inverse functions cancel out, and you have 10x equals, well, when at what degrees do does the cosine uh, equal 0? It happens at 90 degrees plus any number of rotations. And what's nice about cosine is that in general, if you know that 90 degrees get you a cosine of 0. Cosine is the x value of this point. Let's put it on a unit circle so that's 0, 1. It's always going to be true that if you go in the opposite direction, you get the same cosine. So if you turn 90 degrees in this direction and then you turn 90 degrees in the other direction, this would get you to the point 0, negative 1. You're changing the sine values. Those are the y values here. The sine would change between 1 and negative 1, but the cosine remains the same. So uh, it's really nice when you get cosine problems here because then the other answer will have to be negative 90 plus 360n. And then we divide everything by 10 and you get 9 plus 36n and negative 9, the opposite, plus 36n. And that will get us these two choices here, d and c. In the next problem, just take a moment, read it. We'll solve it together. We have a very similar situation here, except we're, um, it's not as friendly. We are in degrees again. But right here, 
let's just say we have 7 times the cosine of 5x plus 9 um, equals 12. Subtract 9 on both sides, it gets us 3, and then divide by 7. So you get the cosine of 5x equals 3 sevenths. We take the inverse cosine of both sides. It's going to get us this statement right here. And when we take the inverse cosine of 3 sevenths on a calculator, you're going to get about 64.62 degrees, about, plus 360 times n. But really, you, because it's cosine, you can go, again, I'll show this, if you go positive 64 degrees in one direction, right, you get some angle. Here's a point. And in this case, the cosine is 3 over 7. That's the x value. And the sine value, we could figure out using the Pythagorean theorem, but I'll leave it out for now. This cosine value of 3 sevenths is also going to equal the cosine of this angle down here, which is 64 degrees in the other direction. These two will line up on the same x value. So it'll be 3 sevenths for the x, the cosine, and the sine will be the opposite of whatever we had up here. So it'll be the opposite of that question mark. So the sine will change when you do this, but the cosine will remain the same. So here we'll have 5x equals negative 64.2 plus 360n. And then we divide both sides by 5 in both cases, and we'll have the problem solved. In this case, you get 12.92 um, plus 360 times n, and negative 12.92 plus 360 times n. I'm wrong, not 360. You, do, you divide everything by 5. That's 72. Oops, crossed the wrong thing out. Let me erase that. 72 and 72. Let's go to one more. Take a moment, try this problem out, and then press play and we'll solve it together. Here we have a problem in radians, but the idea is essentially the same, and yay, we have the cosine. So 16 times the cosine of 15x plus 8 equals 2. Subtract 8 from both sides, divide by 16. What are we going to get? Well, 2 minus 8 is negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 16 reduces to negative 3 eighths. We take the inverse cosine of both sides. And we end up with this statement here. So here, 15x equals the inverse cosine of negative 3 eighths. On a calculator, we get about 1.955 radians plus, not 360 now, but 2 pi times n. And I'm going to write it this way, plus or minus, because it's one or the other. Uh, we'll get you the same cosine. And then you divide everything by 15, and we get um, plus or minus 0 0.1303. And then 2 pi plus 2 pi divided by 15 times n. That can't be reduced. And we get, let's see, I think this one. Missing that line right there. And this one. Okay, hope this helped.